Hey y'all, uh, it is June the 30th, 2018. Thank you for joining me. You already know what it is, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, we've been we've been suffering from a lot of progress in the comment feeds and stuff like that. Everybody's welcome to take a gander at those. All right. I got breaking news for you, you know, and I thought I would go ahead and just tackle it like a pit bull, just jump on it. I mean, I'm talking about breaking news, as you can tell from kind of the bottom of the screen, it's two hours ago. Two hours. Two hours ago is when this article right here that we're going to share was actually published by Cox Media. All right. And the headline reads this, Survivors Describe Horror of Parkland School Shootings in newly released important special documents, all right? Newly released documents. Are we going to get to see them and read them? Nah, not really, but they'll tell us about it. This is Lauren Pag Padgett. She's going to tell us about these documents. Students and teachers who survived Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in Florida told investigators they watched classmates die and had bullets fly past them as they huddled in fear, according to new court documents released Friday. So as you can tell, uh, obviously these people want to get the truth out there. They think Nick Cruz done it. All right, so they're here to convince you every single day with a new article how they know they know he did it. They they know he certainly did it. And these are this right here, like we already stated, it's an article about people witnessing witnesses to this uh, this crime. These witnesses, they got something to say. All right, and we're gonna talk about it. Seventeen people were killed and fourteen others hurt in the February fourteenth shooting. Uh, it says 14 others hurt in the, well, you know, I didn't even notice that, but I could have sworn it was 17 other people hurt. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I don't remember numbers good, but I could have sworn 17 were killed and 17 were hurt. Uh, but they're saying 14 were hurt, and I don't know why they're saying that. Prosecutors released the statements on Friday as they build a death penalty case. They look... Notice they, the, the people who write these articles, they absolutely love the word death. They love the word death, dude. They're itching to say it. They're itching to say death penalty. They, ooh, makes them feel good. Makes them feel real big to say, ooh, that death penalty. They love that. So they're building a death penalty case against the shooting suspect. 19 years old, Nicholas Cruz. Several unidentified teachers. <laughs> Just come on out and say it. Several unidentified teachers. Thanks. All right, let's hear what unidentified people have to say about stuff. Several unidentified teachers who, by the way, have no need to hide their names. Uh, as teachers and students described the sheer terror of the day. And I'm sure that it was very terrifying. One ninth grader told investigators she was writing an essay on her laptop when the shooter started firing into the first floor hallway of the high school. All right, so you remember, there's a sweeping motion down the hallways. He's trying to clip off people in the hallways. All right, so he's got a clear path to walk down, I guess. So we already know he did that. This girl, this unnamed girl, this girl who will remain unnamed for some reason, I don't know why, she, she thought it was balloons popping since it was Valentine's Day, y'all. How do you feel about that? Y'all, I don't know where all y'all are from. I don't know where y'all are from. All right, me, I come from San Antonio, Texas. I have no clue. Is there sort of like a, a balloon popping tradition on Valentine's Day? I've never heard of that. A balloon popping tradition. Well, I thought, well, it's Valentine's Day. Of course, balloons are going to be popping. Right? Isn't that the sound? Isn't that the sound of balloons popping? 
No, uh, a young, young lady, that's not the sound of balloons popping. That's the sound of y'all having not a clue what the hell's going on. The girl says she exchanged a reassuring look with her teacher, but 10 seconds later, a bullet came through the door. So, mind you, they're close enough to where bullets coming through their door to the gunshots. 10 seconds later, by the way. I mean, let's dwell upon the words, shall we? Bullet came through the door. Meaning, shooter has to be right outside the door. Meaning, he was only 10 seconds of walking distance away while he was shooting up the school supposedly. What is that? 10 seconds of walking distance. What is that? If you're on a brisk walk, what would that be? 15 yards? Okay, so he was 15 yards away shooting up the school. <laughs> and this young girl, who will remain unnamed, she thought it was balloons popping in the hallway because it is a Valentine's Day tradition. And so she blew it off. She gave, she gave her unnamed teacher a reassuring look. All right, but 10 seconds later, a bullet came through the door and shattered her computer screen. And look, I mean, it, it was already absurd, right? We already stepped it up to a, a decent level of absurdity. Check out this next sentence. She was shot in her chest and bullets grazed her arm. Now, there's so many different levels and so many different questions that I want to ask. Why would you even mention the bullets grazing her arm, number one? Right? Some pretty serious is getting shot in the chest. All right? I also will note that if you wanted to get a list of all the people, absolutely all the people wounded that day in the high school, you can get that list. I already got that list. It wasn't hard to get. Right. So how and why are even though documents coming out with these people's testimonials, why are y'all never saying the person's name? Is it because you're terrible at your job? Is it because you have a job that you don't even have no clue what you're doing? All right. So but you're not sharing the name, even though I have all the names of the people got shot. So this unnamed person. She got shot in the chest. And also you felt like mentioning she got graced by bullets in her arm. Oh man, she must have really been tripping about her arm, huh? So, says that's when everyone started freaking out. And the teacher started screaming, saying to take cover. The girl said, uh, she said everyone tried to hide behind the teacher's desk. But there wasn't enough room. The girl told investigators one boy was shot in the head. And he never lost consciousness. Just dwell, I mean, come on, y'all. Let's dwell on that one sentence, if you will. Girl to the unnamed girl told investigators, who are also unnamed, that one unna unnamed boy was shot in the head. And he never lost consciousness. What the hell does that mean? Now, you had to go to the next sentence or two to figure out he was grazed in the head if that. He was not sh shot in the head. And notice you're not quoting anybody. The writer of this article isn't quoting anybody. Could have worded this sentence just however he wanted. He decided to write the girl told investigators that one unnamed mysterious boy shot got shot in the head. He never lost consciousness. She used part of her JROTC shirt to apply pressure to the wound. It's a good idea. Uh, an algebra teacher told prosecutors that when the shooting happened, she was on the second floor. Now, here's where we get to the, the point of the article where I 
turn the video camera on and start talking is what I started doing right when I got to here because I started reading a little bit past here and we're going to read a little bit all right y'all remember an, a, a completely over the top absurd animation right given to us issued through Fox Net, uh, News and all sorts of other outlets I'm sure through the Broward Sheriff's Office themselves, it was an animation. Now, the animation surely could be a tad inaccurate, and I do believe we would all uh, forgive the Sheriff's Office for being a little bit inaccurate. <clears throat> all right. However, it seems as though the animation that they issued us is over the top inaccurate. All right. This is according to, like I said, this article comes out about two, two and a half hours ago. So we're talking about the latest information. This algebra teacher, she says she was on the second floor. Now, if you remember the animation at all during, <laughs> you, you already know what I'm talking about, right? There wasn't nobody on the second floor. Some people think that there was one person who got killed on the second floor. Uh, and then, and then, well, the animation never brings it up ever that there was one person. All right. Some people happen to believe just because Sheriff Israel said, amongst other people, that there was a person on the second floor that got shot. The animation clearly shows that there's nobody for some mysterious reason. The entire second floor completely empty. This algebra teacher seems to think otherwise. All right. So she said she immediately called a code red. The quote is code red. Active shooter alert in her class. And place tape, that's right, y'all, tape on her classroom floor. And you might ask yourself why. It's to mark out the section that couldn't be seen from the window. <laughs> All right. So what she's implying right there is that in no way were they planning to leave that classroom during this particular confusion. Why is it that the animation puts the second floor as completely, utterly empty? What was the point of that? All right, because according to whoever this mysterious lady is, who, you know what I'm saying, uh, seeing people get shot in the chest and in the head, or I mean, I think that might have been the other lady. This, this lady, she said she was on the second floor. All right. And she said she was about to stay put there. All right. She directed students to dash to the part of the room that had tape on the floor because it was a code red. She told investigators she heard the sounds of gunshots increase and gathered her students close. She told investigators she played with one girl's hair uh, to help her try and stay calm. The, the fire alarm went off, but she wasn't going to evacuate. All right, according to her, that is when the fire alarms went off in that building. That decision would save student lives, this article. We're not going to go too much farther into the article, but I did want to share this before we get out of here. That decision would save student lives because many of those who died on the third floor were attempting to flee when the fire alarm went off. All right. I don't remember seeing any sort of evidence of that in the animation, the silly, funny, silly little animation that we were given on purpose by the Broward uh, Sheriff's Office. So if I'm not mistaken, 
I think at the very least, what we're owed, all of us out here, everybody, everybody's heard about the situation. What we're owed is an apology from number one, David Hogg, for uh, not knowing up from down, from having two different stories. And, you know, we also kind of deserve an apology from that Sheriff Israel and whoever is responsible for that silly little animation that couldn't even, I guess, be further from the truth. Could we see some surveillance footage now, please? Uh, I don't think we can. I don't think we can, but we are getting to the bottom of it. All right, and it's only a matter of time. The truth is spilling out. I appreciate everybody out there. I even appreciate these uh, hacks who be writing these articles. Trust me, we benefit from the articles y'all don't even understand. Anyways, I'll holler at all my people. Uh, I appreciate all y'all uh, later and stuff. Everybody out there doing your thing, man. I'll holler at y'all a little bit later.